Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include EU allocates 44 million euros for climate action projects. And buoyed up by EU vote, Italy's Renzi seeks changes in Brussels. Independent Scott has nil chance of keeping UK's EU opt-outs. And EU gives 3.4 billion shillings grant for city roads. Plus, Clegg is ready to pledge in our EU referendum to match the Tories. Make a note in your diary, our live table talk show takes place tomorrow at 3pm. We have got some amazing guests, including Rodney Atkinson, brother to Rowan and author of Treason at Maastricht. Also joining us, political rapper Gadman Dubs and Mike Robinson from the UK column, along with other guests. Join us live here on our website, theunituk.com, at 3pm. That's 1400 hours GMT. It's Wednesday, 2nd of July. Thank you for joining us. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is The Unit Nightly News. First up, the top story from our homepage. EU allocates €44 million Euros for climate action projects. The European Commission has launched its first call for proposals under a new funding programme for projects dedicated to climate action. The sub-programme is part of the EU LIFE programme from 2014 to 2020 and will spend €864 million Euros of your tax contributions on climate action over the next seven years. Interestingly, as I wrote this article earlier today, an email entitled Antarctic Ice is Growing rolled into my mailbox. The opening paragraph reads, Iconic footage of the ice shelf carving into the South Atlantic has been cited as evidence of man-made global warming, but the Antarctic ice sheet has been growing since the satellite record began in 1979. And although Arctic ice shrank during the recent warming spell, nonetheless, global sea ice, north and south, looks to have turned upwards as global temperatures have plateaued. However, the Euro Bureau kleptocrats never let a lack of evidence stand in the way of their frivolous spending programmes. Of course, one must also remember that this £864 million is being offered to researchers and scientists to study and hypothesise about what to do on the matter. So there's no pro-anthropogenic global warming bias in this programme at all. Buoyed by EU vote, Italy's Renzi seeks change in Brussels. It's been a long time since an Italian leader went to Brussels with as strong a hand as the one held by Prime Minister Matteo Renzi, whose triumph in last month's European elections left him with a big say on who should head the EU Commission. <laughs> Cameron's campaign to stop former Luxembourg Prime Minister Jean-Claude Juncker crashed with a splutter into the weeds and has given Renzi leverage to make Italy's voice count. We're going to be demanding about policy. We can't accept austerity policies anymore. We'll see how we can change them, he said. However, EU officials have cautioned that there was no question of changing the bloc's budget discipline rules, only of making greater use of existing flexibility on deficit reduction offered to countries carrying out growth-enhancing economic reforms. Renzi has looked to German Chancellor Angela Merkel and European Council President Hermann von Rompuy to deliver a change in the Eurozone's policy mix in return for his acquiescence to Juncker. Well, yet another example of horse trading that goes on in Brussels. Now, Jackie Holstock wrote to us asking about the system and mechanism by which the EU operates, and our video library today has an explanation of why the EU bureaucracy enables stories like this one to take place. Independent Scotland has nil chance of keeping UK's EU opt-out, says Major. And Independent Scotland has no chance of keeping the UK's special European Union opt-outs and would face significant problems joining NATO, Sir John Major has said. Yes, you've guessed it, folks. They've wheeled the grey alien out from his slumber to support a no vote in Scotland. The Minister of Maastricht, the Master of Disaster, and we believe E.T.'s brother, go home, John, is back in black. Well, grey. 
The former Prime Minister said it would be very difficult for Alex Salmond, Scotland's First Minister, to persuade other EU members that Scotland should inherit the UK's multi-million pound rebate and its lucrative opt-outs on VAT and the Schengen Open Borders Treaty if it became independent. Well, well, the timing couldn't be better, as we'll be discussing this man's politics in tomorrow's live table talk show, where we'll be discussing treason. Have UK politicians committed treason by handing governance of Britain to a foreign power? Join us here tomorrow at 3pm. EU gives 3.4 billion shillings grant for city roads. The European Union will undertake 16 kilometres of road links in Nairobi to ease congestion between major junctions. The project aims at ensuring the large number of pedestrians in Nairobi benefit. Street lights will be installed and all the roads will have pavements along the highway. Well, meanwhile, the Greeks, Cypriots and Spaniards are fighting for bread in the streets. And furthermore, a quick search for Africa roads on our website reveals many of these projects have already been undertaken and some of the roads simply got washed away when the rainy season arrived. <laughs> Want to know why the good people of Europe are mostly skint? Look no further, people. The EU kleptocrats are out on the tiles with your credit cards. Clegg ready to pledge in-out referendum to match the Tories. Well, Nick Clegg is on the brink of matching David Cameron's pledge to hold an in-out referendum on Britain's membership of the EU, senior Liberal Democrats say. The Deputy Prime Minister is understood to be considering a dramatic shift in his party's position following the Lib Dem wipeout in last month's European elections. Well, the move would leave Labour dangerously exposed as the only major party opposing a referendum. Hang on, hang on. Leave Labour dangerously exposed. You're having a laugh. All three of this Lib Lab Con lunatic political bandwagon have completely failed to respect or represent the democratic rights of their constituents. Take a look at our film, Betrayed, in the video section of our website and see for yourself how successive ministers from all these parties have given away the rights of the British people to determine and govern their own nation. Today in our video library, so Jackie Holstock wrote in asking for advice about how the European Union is constructed and how its systems operate. Take a look in our video library where we have a good explanation of what is a rather convoluted system. Of course, its complexity is what hides the true nature of the beast. Whilst the Euro Orcs big up the press about the Parliament and play down the dark powers of the Nazgul overlords in the European Commission, often citing the term the EU's executive arm, the reality is that the direction, steering and policy making all takes place within the Commission. The Parliament is just a shop full of nodding dogs. Ah, I see you're sceptical again. Well, folks, YouTube is your friend. Go watch the videos of MEPs presenting their opposition to the Commission's policies, regulations, laws and directives and notice two things. Thing one, their time is highly restricted. Thing two, the chamber is almost always empty with just a smattering of the 690 odd MEPs there to listen. Why? Well, because to get their allowances they must be present to vote, but beyond that they're off round the town cashing in the chits to sample smoked cheeses and quaff wine. That, my friends, is your money and your opinions being given a proper ignoring to. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon.